Many of them are ill-educated and have tattoos on their foreheads. And, and you know, how are you going to, and, and I hate to be generalized about it, but it's true. I didn't hear a word she said. <laughs> I, was, I was looking at the James Brown wig. Summing up, left wants power taken away from the white establishment. They want a profound change in the way America is run. Slaves that worked there were well-fed and had decent lodgings provided by the government. And that is just a small sampling of the best of the worst from Bill O'Reilly, now consigned to the annals of TV history after sexual harassment accusations forced Fox News to end his 21-year reign as the network's most popular host. O'Reilly's ouster after at least 50 big-name brands withdrew their advertising from his show is being held as, a vic held as a victory for O'Reilly's accusers and a highly visible blow against workplace sexual harassment. It's been a costly lesson for Fox News because O'Reilly is walking away with a cool $25 million per his contract. And according to the New York Times, his golden parachute is just a fraction of more than $85 million in payouts related to sexual harassment's allegations at Fox News, $40 million of which went to Fox's founding chairman, Roger Ailes, who was ousted last year in a sexual harassment scandal of his own. Both Ailes and O'Reilly have denied allegations against them. The Times reports that since Ailes' departure, the network has tried to clean up its act with changes to human resources training and sensitivity sessions. And some of Fox News' current hosts might want to be the first to sign up. Because this week on CNN, after Sarah Palin avoided a question about whether she'd experienced sexual harassment before leaving Fox News in 2015, they went and got the receipts. Here's current Fox News host Chris Wallace yucking it up with former Fox Business host Don Imus in 2010. I'm excited. First of all, uh, I'm excited to uh, finally meet and interview Sarah Palin. We've been chasing her like Captain Ahab and the Great White Whale for the last year and a half. When you interview her, will she be sitting on your lap? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I can, one can only hope. Wallace later apologized for his remarks. Then in 2011, Tucker Carlson, the inheritor of Fox, uh, Fox's Bill O'Reilly time slot, also had to apologize after tweeting about Palin, Palin's popularity falling in Iowa but maintains lead to become supreme commander of Milfistan. Oh. I'll let you Google the meaning of MILF for yourself. Even though we're on basic cable, I'm not going to tell you what that means. And in a prime example of the kind of comment that allegedly made Roger Ailes the former Fox News chairman, there's this 2011 quote he gave to the Associated Press. Quote, I hired Sarah Palin because she was hot and got ratings. All of which kind of makes you wonder whether the time for change at Fox News goes beyond what's at 8 p.m. And joining me now is civil rights attorney Lisa Bloom, who's representing two of the women in their complaints against O'Reilly. Jamil Smith, senior national correspondent for MTV News, national, nationally syndicated talk radio host Michael Medved, and MSNBC contributor Gabe Sherman, who broke the story on O'Reilly's ouster this week. And Gabe, I'm going to come to you first because the, it isn't over. I mean, we, we've got a, a culture at Fox News that clearly goes beyond Bill O'Reilly, no? Yes, and um, as you pointed out, uh, Joy, this is a systemic problem at Fox News that was created by Roger Ailes over more than two decades. And overnight, I reported on pending litigation uh, that's going to be filed next week by seven more African American employees at Fox News who are claiming racial discrimination. And I obtained a letter from their attorneys that was sent to Fox that described really horrific acts of racial discrimination in which uh, black employees were forced to arm wrestle for the en entertainment. Of of white employees in the accounting department. So these sorts of descriptions are uh, really evident of a culture that is entrenched and that has not changed in the wake of Bill O'Reilly's departure. And, and Jamil, we came in, when, we, when Jamil and I came in this morning, we were both uh, perusing the arm wrestling story. I mean, mm -hmm. the idea that the head of, of the Human Resources Department was sort of making her black and female employees arm wrestle white employees for the entertainment of, of white s staff. I can't even fathom that that happens in in America in the modern world. Yeah, I mean, it, it's clearly, obviously, the racial connotations can't be missed here. I mean, it clearly evokes, uh, you know, enslaved Africans and their descendants being forced to compete or wrestle or fight uh, for the entertainment of uh, slaveholders and their guests. Um, granted, Maybe this isn't slavery, but it's certainly unacceptable, you know, in any workplace for anybody to be forced to do something for the entertainment of yeah. a superior. Well, according to Bill O'Reilly, slaves were quite well fed, so oh, it's all good. Yeah. Right? So I guess it, it wasn't was. that bad. Let's play a little bit more Bill O'Reilly because I think, you know, at least I want to talk about the sort of broader issue of the. the and you've written about about uh, you know the, the racial dynamics as well as obviously your work with uh, on issues of, of sexism and you know gender. This is Bill O'Reilly sort of putting them all in one soundbite. Take a look. 
When was the last time you saw a public service ad telling young black girls to avoid becoming pregnant? Has President Obama done such an ad? How about Jackson or Sharpton? Has a Congressional Black Caucus demanded an ad like that? How about the PC pundits who work for NBC News? White people don't force black people to have babies out of wedlock. And he never got in trouble for that, Lisa. Mm -hmm. What kind of culture is being created if that is the content people are consuming? That's a top rated show. Well, that's particularly rich in light of my client, Perkita Burgess, who is an African American woman who claims that he sexually harassed her constantly over a period of many months, called her hot chocolate, et cetera, and really stressed her out to the point where she would come home every day so anxious and withdrawn. She just tried to keep her head down and work. And she ultimately was the catalyst that brought him down and a certain satisfaction. I think that we all take in that, given his long history of really overtly racist comments like that. Remember when he talked about Sylvia's at Harlem and he said he couldn't believe that black people would sit around in a restaurant just like normal people yeah. and eat food and yeah. not throw things at each other. Yeah, they weren't throwing food. It, it, pretty amazing. And, you know, Michael, I'm glad that you were able to come today because I, I, I think a lot of people on the left who don't consume Fox News and don't consume sort of the culture around it just can't understand why, why this is acceptable to the conservative movement, which is who they are advertising and broadcasting to. What is going on? Well, for, first of all, I, I think what's going on has been a piling on, which is way, way beyond what's appropriate. I, the one thing I want to say about Bill O'Reilly, I don't know him that well. I know nothing about his behavior backstage, really. I haven't really witnessed it. I've never worked on Fox News. The, the, the point about this is that Bill O'Reilly is one of the very few voices on the right who has been at least somewhat unpredictable, who could ask tough questions of Donald Trump. And of course he said outrageous things. I called him out on the air when he made that comment about Maxine Waters recently and about her, quote, James Brown wig. That was totally out of line. But, but it seems to me if, if we're now going to replay stuff going back five, six, seven years, the, the point about Bill O'Reilly is none of this, anything that people are talking about here, is going to dent his popularity with the three to four million people who listen without fail, uh, watch his show. And I would imagine that he is going to continue in uh, being an important voice in the United States after his non-compete is over for six months. Who knows where he's going to end up? Well, he's going to end up on a podcast, at least we know on Monday, his new podcast episode will air, so he's still around. <laughs> but I think the question, I'll just throw it out to the panel, is it's not just Bill O'Reilly. There is a large audience that wants to consume very racially provocative, mm -hmm. sexually provocative um, content that is, 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 that is marginalizing to women. The women on Fox News all look a certain way mm -hmm. and have to and, and are treated a certain way. Even the conservative women who are just sort of be treated a certain way. I mean, I'll throw it to the panel. Is It isn't just about Bill O'Reilly. This is no. about people that are consuming this. Well, that's right. And look what President Trump said. I don't think what he did was wrong. Not he didn't do it, but I don't think it was wrong. And there's a large portion of the public who doesn't think that racial bias, you know, really overt is wrong. They don't think that sexual harassment is wrong. I do sexual harassment cases every day. I've had other sexual harassment cases against Fox News. Fox News. I've had uh, three women with sexual harassment claims against Bill O'Reilly. So this is a very broad culture, and that's what we're up against. However, the good news yeah. is the majority of the American public does think it's wrong, and in fact, the law prohibits right. it, and that's yeah. what we have on our side. And, and I think also, Gabe, you have a situation where Fox mm -hmm. News is highly influential, not just among the audience, but with in the White House. Uh, you know, there was a New York Times piece yeah. that came out that talked about the fact that among Donald Trump's frequent conversations and advisors uh, are uh, Rupert Murdoch and Sean Hannity, uh, the tremendous yeah. access that this White House has, I mean, that Fox News has to this White House, right? Yeah, and you know, Joey, when I was reporting my biography of Roger Ailes, I would talk to very prominent and influential Republicans who would privately grouse and complain about the circus that Ailes created at Fox News. And yet, these very same politicians would go on the network to reach and connect with the Republican base. And I think fundamentally, where this would change is if the Republican Party, and we know this is not going to happen, but if the Republican Party and politicians said, we are not going to 
put ourselves in a position of supporting this style of broadcasting and media that marginalizes and denigrates you know, groups of people. But I don't think that's going to happen. But if it did, that would th then put pressure on them to change. And, and Michael, I, you know, because could, you're, yeah, I would love to hear from you on this. Yes, Michael. Yeah, if, if, if I could just ju jump in here. I, everybody on this panel is a big defender of the First Amendment. I know that. And the, the idea is, I, I really think that what you're beginning to communicate, and, and I would warn you against it, please, is, is a de desire to just cut all Fox News, to eliminate that voice. There's lots of stuff on that network that's outrageous. There's some stuff on every network that is outrageous. And uh, no one is claiming that Fox is fair and balanced. But the point is, what is it that you want exactly? I mean, well, let me ask I, you a question, uh, Michael. I, 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 just to, to, inter, to have a, a little sure. dialogue with you on that, there has been a concerted message, a message that's come from the right for a long time, going all the way back to the Clinton era, that constantly critiques the culture of the left, that the left is corroding right. the overall culture. But I wonder if there's a self critique here on the right that a culture of racism and sexism is, has been created over decades, and Fox News is just part of it. But that is there any self critique? within the conservative world that this culture is denigrating the country. Well, sure there is. And, and you saw that with a very substantial number of conservatives, including myself, who were very critical of President Trump. There were 25 members of Congress when the Access Hollywood tape came out about They all voted for the, him. The then they all turned nominee. around and voted for him and are, have they, marched behind him like, it's not like true. penguins. It's not who, true. There, who there has are broken still, from him? Oh, uh, there are people like uh, Senator Ben Sass, who who is a friend, and Senator Jeff But he was Jeff never Flake Trumper. And, I mean, he, he was it, always it, against Trump. You, I mean, I'm right, saying the but, ones but, who criticized him, like Marco Rubio, have then said he would be honored to help elect him. Uh -huh. He's been completely devoted to Donald Trump in every way. People like Paul Ryan, who were critical okay. of the racial comments against the judge, completely devoted to Donald Trump. They've all marked, and they and they pretended the Access Hollywood thing never happened. And they where are their there. voices well, I, against I, I, sexual I, harassment? Where are the conservative voices to say, are our daughters in the workplace have a right to go to work without being hit on by the big boss. They have a right to complain about it without losing their jobs and being driven out of their entire television industry, which is what happened to all of the Fox News accusers. Okay, again, I think you have to make some kind of distinction here uh, regarding particularly charges that aren't verified yet and that are being contested. <laughs> and I know that as, a, as an advocate, Lisa, you, you understand that. Look, I, I am one conservative voice. Sexual harassment is not okay. Assaulting people is not okay. Insulting people is not okay. Racism is never okay. But, and, and again, there were tons of voices on the right that called out President Trump on on these issues when he was a candidate. He's now president of the United States. And, and there is a sense on the right, as I think there is throughout the country, among the balance of people, is he's president. Some things that he's done have been wonderful, in my opinion, like appointing uh, Justice Gorsuch to the Supreme Court. There are other things he's done that have been appalling and that continue to be. And well, it seems to me that people, pe for people to say that uh, Trump can do no right, is just as bad and just as destructive as those who say on the right that okay, Trump I, can do no I'm wrong. I'm going to give Tamil's if, die if to get the last word. If I could interrupt the self-congratulation here for conservatives here, let me just talk to Michael man, man to man here. Okay, sure. you have you have several women who have accused Bill O'Reilly of sexual harassment eight. and abuse. Yes, it's eight now. Eight How specific many women do we need been to make fired. Okay, no, no, Michael, let me finish. My eight women who have accused him of sexual harassment. At what point? Are you going to believe them? That's the oh, question. Look, I, I, I believe, I, I, again, that's not for me to decide. He's paid Two out of them had to What do you mean it's not for you? Yeah. Michael, I'm asking so you. We, what, I, I wish we had more time. Okay. I wish we had uh, wait, more time. I am not this, saying, oh, hold on, let me, let me be very clear. I'm not saying that Bill O'Reilly shouldn't have been fired. I, I just don't know. It just, what seems to me to be lamentable is the idea that we're attacking the entire culture of another network. We're well, saying that that say, other network is right. invalid. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to stop this right here with the final, and take the host privilege and get the final because we are out of time, that I think that the right has made its business attacking the culture uh, of the left, mm. of liberals, of Hollywood. And this has been a stock and trade of the right for a long time. I think what we're asking here is a little self-reflection, because to your point, Michael, and we, you know, we love you and glad you come on the show, Thank Donald you. Trump is president of the United States despite ongoing open 
proud vulgarity. And so I think that the mm -hmm. right might just want to reflect on the fact that that um, they're okay with that. But we'll, we'll, we'll have this conversation have. at another. Well, I'm glad that we're not. That's why we love to have you on the show. Thank you very Thank much, you. Lisa Bloom, Jamil Smith, Michael Thank Medved, you. and Gabriel Sherman. We're going to have to do this again. And up next, the federal prosecutors missing in action at the Justice Department. Why their positions may not be filled anytime soon. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.